if we want to be a little tongue-in-cheek, we can say that we're now living in the era of poorly planned and managed life-altering, environment-changing technological rollouts. And what I have in mind is YouTube's integration with Google+, Plus, which has been going on for some time, but has drastically affected things in the last day. With something that would seem fairly small, but actually changes the entire picture, and that is comments. So I'm, I've been prompted, you might say, I never thought that I would be talking much about technology or its effects on our, our life, because I'm a historian of philosophy, and I shoot videos that have to do largely with, with past thinkers, and I, I do a lot of application of how these things could fit into your, your life, and I do communicate through YouTube as well as a number of other technological platforms, but I didn't think I'd be doing a lot of reflecting on that in videos, but now I'm, I've been prompted to do it in part because I've kind of had it. Um, and that can be a good prompt sometimes. That can be a good provocation at, at times. And what I want to do in this video is uh, six main things. I want to communicate with my viewers who are left completely in the lurch when it comes to the interaction that we have been having uh, over the last two and a half years, in some cases, through comments, which has been a very important part of what it is that I do with YouTube, on YouTube, and through YouTube. And it has to do also with how people are able to interact with, with me, how I'm able to do philosophy as a scholar, as a professor, as, as an educator on, on YouTube. So Google is really in, in a lot of ways, um, rang a bell that can't be unrung, and you know the other metaphors that go along with that, right? So one thing I want to do is communicate with my viewers, and I'm going to do that in a moment. Another thing is I want to talk a little bit about some, some history, and then the third thing is I want to talk about what's actually wrong right now with YouTube comments and how that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg. The Third thing I want to do is talk a little bit about, just sort of throw out a teaser about something that I've been thinking a lot about and, and wrote a blog entry on a long time ago on my main blog, Rexus Dino ITK, about all this integration of platforms. Fourth thing I want to talk about, or the fifth thing I want to talk about, sorry, is how these new comments, paradoxically, they have the potential to make for a really social interaction which would be in many respects much better than what we currently have on YouTube but right now it's just it's just abysmal it's awful and the sixth thing I want to talk about is how this is affecting the whole process of providing elements of education via the net through YouTube which has been one of the main ways of delivering new content dwarfing everything else so uh, to my viewers I am trying to figure out how I can actually respond to comments. As it turns out, uh, not only am I unable to respond to older comments just from last night or yesterday and carry on threads of conversation that we've had going for sometimes weeks or even months or intervene in, in con, you know, comment threads, I can't even respond to the new ones. So the only thing I'm actually able to do is work in Google Plus uh, and to say thanks for subscribing or maybe you should check this out by posting on your channels. So I'm really frustrated uh, and I know you must be frustrated as well because part of what, what's you know so cool about YouTube is being able to interact with, with content creators. and. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed a lot of the interactions that I've had with, with YouTube viewers over the years. So I, I have no idea what's going to go on. But stick with us and um, we'll see what happens. You know, hopefully this is just a, a little hiccup on the part of Google+. Plus. But we'll have to see. In any case, I'm going to continue putting out videos. I've got the core concept videos coming out. I've got some more existentialist stuff. I'm, I'm going to shoot more of these technology-based videos. 
and uh, I've got a few other things in, in the works. So the second item, here's what I'd like to say to Google. Google, who do you think you are? Yahoo? I mean, we expect this sort of idiocy and terrible, uh, poorly thought out attempts to integrate platforms together and bring new features in from Yahoo because, I mean, look at they, they managed to turn for 10 years to buy up platforms and to turn them into crap. Um, YouTube is probably Google's, besides its search, most important product out there, the one that has the greatest potential and they tinkered with it. I don't know whose decision this was, but I gotta tell you, Google, you need to hire people like me who actually are a little bit closer to ground level and are engaged with, with other users. So we can tell you, that's a dumb idea. Don't do this. Don't force everybody from YouTube into Google Plus Comments. Don't, you know, cut off the very possibility of commenting on anything from, oh, say, two days ago because you're damaging your product, all perhaps irrevocably. I mean, Google can become Yahoo. Or I could say, Google, who do you think you are, Facebook? I mean, Google Plus is, is sort of like, you know, Facebook's um, little rival. It's not doing that well in comparison to it, but it's been getting better and better and better. And Facebook has been alienating users for years by, by rolling out new features that users don't like, but they stick with it because Facebook is, the, is really the only game in town unless Google Plus takes off. Twitter can't compare. LinkedIn is for something different. Um, the other social networks just don't have the, the sort of capacity. But, you know, Facebook's uh, stock is pretty stagnant. And that's because people have gotten hip to the fact that these people don't really know what they're doing. They know all about code and they know all about how to bring about things. But when it comes to making users actually happy, they're not doing a very good job. So Google, you want to be like them? I mean, I thought you were trying to market yourself as being something different. Now you're showing yourself to just be more of the same. And if you're just going to be more of the same, hell, let's go with Facebook. Why, why bother with, with Google? And if you're going to, you know, intrude into another very, very successful platform that you happen to have bought up a long time ago, YouTube, then you better do it right. So you better start, you know, bringing in people who actually have some sort of sense for how these changes are going to affect people. Um, so that, that brings me to the third point. What's actually wrong? What's, what's gone wrong? Well, you know, the new comment, I'm going to call it the comment regime, is just sort of the tip of the iceberg. I've, I've noticed some things getting stuck over the last week or so in YouTube, and I thought, oh, these are just little glitches. Um, and these are things which would probably not be all that apparent to many users. Uh, it's something that content producers would be more uh, attuned to. For example, um, yesterday I looked at my, my numbers and I saw that I was about to break 700,000 views. And I, you know, I looked at the number and I was like, oh, I'm just shorted by that much. It stayed the same for over a day. Now you're, you're telling me that nobody has actually viewed any of the videos over this day? No, YouTube is, is somehow not tracking things the way that they ought to be. Um, so there's some glitches there. I, I actually had to uh, write to um, some of the, the, the uh, content producing help stuff because I'm not able to, to modify my playlist the way I used to. They got somehow shoved into YouTube EDU and there's no edit button anymore. That's a big problem. Um, things are sort of getting fixed in stone and that's not what we want out of the web. We want the capacity to actually get in there and tinker with things. I think perhaps what was going on is Google told YouTube, you just like hold on to everything as it is while we push these changes in. So what are the changes? Well, the new comments, in order to leave a comment, you actually have to do so through some Google Plus integration. And, you know, that, that's got some interesting features to it, but the big problem is all the previous comments on videos. And I have, you know, tens of thousands of comments on my videos. And some sites have 
hundreds of thousands, even millions of comments on their videos. They're all frozen. Nobody can continue the conversations. Nobody can add anything. Nobody can, can refute anything. Nobody can continue an argument, make a new argument, introduce some new information, link to anything. Google effectively dropped down something like a guillotine that, that cut off the present from the past. And that is, is doing a lot of damage. They'd better figure out a way to, to incorporate that or else all of those previous comments, they're not necessarily lost, they're just frozen. Nobody can do anything. Nobody can respond to them. Nobody can point out whether they're, they're brilliant or stupid. Nobody can say, that made me think of this. A lot has been lost because of that. And all it would have taken is a little bit of thought to figure out that's going to be the consequence of this. I mean, did they actually get anybody who uses YouTube in on this decision? That's what I would like to know. Um, they introduced, uh, here's a few other things. They introduced a feature to identify spam, what, what is likely to be spam, and filter it out. Now, I've looked at some of the things that the spam filter is catching, and a lot of it's not spam. A lot of it is actually legitimate comments on my videos by people who took the time to actually write something. Either, you know, some of them are very intelligent, some of them perhaps not so much, but they took the time to do it. They invested their time and effort to communicate with another person. And this spam filter that, that Google is using just decided that they're spam. In the old version, I could actually look at it and I could say, that's not spam. There's no button to do that anymore. It invites you to review the, the comments, but it doesn't let you do anything with them. That's a real problem. Putting these things in the hands of, of a computer algorithm was a really stupid decision. That computer algorithm had better be dead on all the time, or you just lost a whole bunch of interactions that were possibly very productive, very creative. You're going against what Google is supposed to be about. So that's a big problem. Um, I like to think of what's going on as sort of like the metaphor of plate tectonics. We're only seeing a bit of the problem right now. There could be even deeper problems that this is, this is heralding or, or signifying. That's something worth thinking about. Um, think about how dependent we are on Google doing their job effectively, on YouTube doing their job effectively, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, you know, just all across the, the web, these major platforms. Or, you know, Apple, Microsoft, you know, if iTunes fails, think about how much gets screwed up in the process. Um, these are real issues. There's something seriously worth thinking about here that's bigger than just comment sections. And maybe I'll talk about that in, in some later videos, but I want to get back to this problem of comment sections. So here's the, the fifth thing. What is, what is going on? Google's idea, and I don't want to just bash Google, you know, because I think what they're doing in, in some respects is a great idea. They want to make interactions more social. So they want to create the possibility of having chains of conversation that can, can go on longer, that can involve more people, that can be a little bit more focused. And I think that's a, a great idea. I'm not going to knock that. I think that that's a positive. Um, I think it's also very positive that now we can go longer than 500 characters because you know, frankly, when I'm writing responses to people about philosophy videos, sometimes I need more than 500 characters. Um, you know, especially if they're asking me some complicated questions or, or making some interesting points. Where the, the, the problem is coming in is that they have cut off a lot of the, the very people who they are trying to help. I'll come back to that in a moment. I want to talk about another feature that I think is, is a good intention. They, by, by adding this, this spam filter and you know, the capacity to, to approve or disapprove of certain uh, comment terms, 
they're trying to they're trying to take a stand on something that's a fundamental problem in the net and has been really from from the start of, of, of public involvement in it and that's trolling and flaming they are trying in effect by some of the changes that they they are rolling out to make the the internet and to make YouTube a more civil platform there's a lot of implications involved there that, that really need to be explored and so in, I'll, I'll do some of that in, in some future videos but I, I think that on the whole I can get behind that. Getting back to the fundamental problem, it's that they rolled out these changes in such a way that they did two things. One is they cut off all the previous conversations. So, you know, what is all that stuff that people have invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of thought in, including myself, but I'm, I'm thinking about my viewers. I mean, I have 7,000 subscribers and not everybody who comments on my videos is actually a subscriber so that means for every you know hour I put in creating video and, and responding to comments there's tons of people out there putting in hundreds of hours maybe thousands of hours watching this stuff thinking about it writing something responding to other people engaging in a conversation so Google you just sort of push them all aside and said, everything you've done up to this point doesn't matter. That's a big problem. Because people don't like to hear that what they've done doesn't matter. That it's not real. And now notice with this, this technology, Google could just snap its fingers and everything that anybody has written up until that point could just vanish. That's a big, that's a big issue. <laughs> I, I certainly wouldn't want that to happen to me. Um, it, it shows us the vulnerability that we have to these giants making making decisions. Um, they're they're doing another thing too. I said there were two things that that they were doing that's 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 wrong. They are alienating the very public that they most want to incorporate. It's as if they think that viewers who just sign on now are more important than viewers who have been with them for a long time. That's always a mistake for a company to, to make. It's, it's a tempting one. And, you know, a lot of people do this in personal life, too, or they do this in their professional life. They, they lose their old contacts because the new ones are more interesting. They forget their old friends because the, the new ones are more interesting and have more to offer to them. Google's effectively doing that with how they're rolling out these changes. That's, that's a real problem. That shows a lack of prudence that's quite alarming. Um, I skipped over something and I want to come back to it actually. This, this is a good segue into it. The, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was we've got these gigantic platforms out there that have a lot of control over things that are now very important to those of us that are tapped into the, the net, who have invested a good portion of our lives and efforts and content and, and livelihood even for some of us into. Um, there's, co there's this constant jockeying for a position between the, the big top-tier ones like Google, Apple, Microsoft, um, who else would, would fit in there, um, Facebook. They're always trying to bring out new products to integrate more things. They're, they're competing with each other very much like Great Power Dynamics. And then there's, you know, the second tier of, of, <clears throat> of things where quite often they do well if they just stick to what they're good at, like LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, you know, all, all of those sorts of, sorts of things. And there's this concept that I call platform plurality. Um, all of the great ones are always competing with each other by trying to absorb a greater share of the market by doing what the other ones do. So Facebook for a while tried to get into doing email and it was just complete 
complete flop, you know, there, there was no point to it. Um, image sharing, you know, are they going to do that, aren't they going to do that, are they going to offer the capacity to do editing in that, are, you know, where are things going to be downloaded, how much of an experience are they going to do, should Google bring out Google Glass, you know, um, would Facebook ever consider doing something like that? Would Apple ever consider doing something like that? They're always trying to expand and, and introduce more and more things and integrate them within their system. And they always have their way of looking at things. This is a problem for Google. This is a huge problem these days for Apple, who, who is declining in quality. It's a big problem for Facebook. It's a big problem for Microsoft. And I am a proponent of what I call platform plurality. I, I don't want to see any of these, these big behemoths ever win. I want there always to be a number of different platforms that, are, that, that can communicate with each other. So for example in Pinterest you can share to Twitter, you can share to, to uh, um, Facebook, but I don't want Pinterest just sucked up and turned into one little tool of this gigantic conglomerate. Um, any more than I want Learnist or, or you know any of these. I don't want Facebook to ever absorb Google. I don't want Google to ever absorb Facebook. I want them to be distinctively different and to be able to do different things and not to be able to dominate the, the market completely. Um, I like the fact that YouTube can share to, to Twitter, can share to LinkedIn, can share to these, these other platforms. I don't want to see YouTube become an exclusively Google product because that's actually bad for everybody else and that's bad for me. So I'm always suspicious every time that I see some new rollout like this where there's greater integration. It needs to be done well. YouTube is, is a community and the mere fact that Google happens to own that, that company, happens to have that as a product, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that Google actually owns the hearts and minds and allegiances of the YouTube community. Google has a responsibility to do do right by them, to observe sort of the, the norms of that community, not just to shape it however it likes. Well, you know, I'd say that's actually a moral responsibility when you get that large that you actually control a significant part of our, our uh, technosphere, you might say. But even if we just put it in business terms, if you mess with that sort of stuff, you're stupid. I mean, Google, you know, had this this great uh, thing that I always made fun of in class. Their their ethics was don't be evil. How about change it to don't be stupid? Now let me go, since education is the opposite of stupidity, and talk about the last thing I want to talk about. How are these changes to comments affecting? the use of YouTube as an educational tool. Because that's why I'm on YouTube. It's not to make a ton of money, because I'm, I'm not, actually. I'm not barely making anything off of ad revenue. Um, and it's not to become uh, a superstar, because that's not happening either. Although it is interesting that when I go to conferences, there's always somebody who says, yeah, I know you some, from somewhere. Why am I doing this? I get tons of comments from people who are saying what I'm doing is helpful for them. That, and, I, and a lot of the comments that I get are people saying, I, I can't afford to go to university right now, or I couldn't ever go to university. I'm, I'm glad that you, you're providing this, this content because I'm able to use it to, to you know, further my own education as a lifelong learner. And I have students who are happy because what I'm giving them helps them out in their classes. YouTube is this extraordinary culture of opportunity for disseminating education in a way that transcends all these sorts of barriers that have stood in the way for a long time, particularly class and nationality um, and, you know, access to, to, to things. There, I'm not saying that you know it's something utopian or anything like that. There's a lot that would need to be done to, to expand it further. But YouTube is this amazing platform for education. And they, they've even created YouTube EDU to try to support that. And I think that's a great thing. Not being able to do comments the way that it's traditionally been done, even if you add in the new features, 
is a bad thing. Not being able to incorporate or respond to past comments on the videos that are currently already out there, some of which have been out there for a long time and have had extensive conversations taking place which are participatory and are educational, this is doing harm to the ability of these videos to be elements of people's education. Google really did not think the, this, this stuff through. Um, now, you know, again, it seems like what they want to do, I'm not going to say this is all just a business decision and trying to, you know, capture a market for G plus or anything like that. I'm not going to take the cynical route. I'm going to say, yeah, I, I, I understand that they actually have a vision of community that they want to try to uh, further by this new comment stuff. And they, they want to do it through Google+, in, you know, infusing itself into to YouTube. All of that is good. But you've already built a community. YouTube built communities, and you need to respect those communities before you start building new ones. Again, this is the problem of do you dismiss all your old friends when they're the ones who are supporting you in your very quest to have new friends? It's a, 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 you know, that's a moral problem, and it's a, you know, it's a prudential, even business problem. You don't screw all your old clients and just move on to new clients when your old clients are the ones paying your bills, do you? Providing you with your capital, uh, whether it's, it's, you know, monetary or social, or market share. Um, I guess where I'm going to close is I think what Google ought to think about, is, and, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm pretty small potato, so I don't think Google is going to respond to me, or even a Google spokesperson is going to respond to me, but this is worth having a conversation about. Um, so actually, I'll say two things. One is, you have to ask the question, why should we YouTube content producers continue putting in all this time, effort, work, thought, in develop, to developing high quality educational resources for a platform that might screw us over. And that's really what they did here, screw us over. Uh, it showed us our vulnerability to Google executives and, you know, who knows what other, you know, some teams making decisions that affect all of us and affect the way in which we can communicate, you, my viewers, and, and, and myself. Why should we contribute to the value of YouTube. I mean, here's the thing to remember. Take away all the lolcat videos and, and animal stuff and, and, you know, beauty tips and, and, you know, record reviews and all these other things. What is YouTube? Is it just about entertainment? Is it just about lifestyle? Or is it about education? If the great value of YouTube, if the, if the best value of YouTube is actually as something that's going to provide an education, or at least the elements of education, for this generation and for future generations, and create communities of learners and, and of thought. Why the hell should we keep on investing all of our time and labor into a platform that doesn't know what it wants to be? That's a big question to think about. So the last thing I'm going to say is, again, we go all the way back to full circle. Those of you who are watching this and commenting on it, it's going to be an experiment to see whether we're able to actually interact the way Google seems to intend for us to on this new video, because this is post-Google takeover of, of, of YouTube, um, at least as far as comments goes. So, if you want, comment on this. I may not be able to respond to your comments. As of the time that I'm shooting this video, I was not able to actually respond to people's comments, even though they were being done through the proper channels in, in Google+. Hopefully, Google will, will straighten all this stuff out. Um, if they do, then I will respond to all of the comments that people put on this video. Um, if not, if you don't see any comments from me, you'll know exactly why. 
and who's to blame.